Hi, and welcome back to Clark Economics. In this video, I'll be discussing economic goals. So, first thing about these goals is these are broad goals that an entire economy might decide to pursue, you know, or prioritize or not. Uh, and an economy, as I mentioned in a previous video, is just some system for allocating uh, products and resources. So, let's start off with the first goal. The first goal is economic efficiency. And efficiency is a pretty simple concept. The idea is getting the most output from your inputs, right? We also talked about labor productivity in an earlier video. In other words, you are not underutilizing. You are using their resource, your resources to the fullest possible potential. In graph form, in yet another video, we looked at this with production possibilities curves. We said if an economy, for some reason, only produces two things, crabs and pineapples, that any point along this line is an efficient point of production. They're using all of their resources to max potential. Any point outside of that production possibilities curve is unattainable, it's impossible, it cannot be done at this time. And any point inside is underutilizing. And so a point like point B here would be inefficient. This economy is not using its resources to the fullest of their potential. So an economy that's efficient is getting the most out of what it puts in. That's the first goal. The second goal, is economic growth. So looking at a, a production possibilities frontier, that line, yes, it represents efficiency, but it also represents potential output. You know, how much could the economy produce when they're using all of their resources to the fullest potential? It's not saying necessarily that they are doing that. That frontier, that line, that curve, the production possibilities tells us what they could do. And that's what potential is all about. So when we talk about economic growth, we're not talking about producing at a point inside the line. We're not talking about on the line or outside the line. We're talking about moving the line itself. In other words, going from a production possibilities frontier like this one and shifting outward to look at one like this. This economy, we're not saying that they're productive necessarily, but we're saying that there is an increased potential to how much output they could be producing. So down here, you know, they can produce this combination of guns and butter, but once the curve shifts outwards, they could be producing a point here. And that's what economic growth is all about. It's not, you know, a short-term fluctuation up or down, efficient or not efficient. It's an increase in potential over a period of time. So that's what economic growth is. We measure economic growth usually using a statistic called GDP, gross domestic product. And so by comparing our GDP this year to our GDP last year, you know, we can see in some ways, are, is the economy growing? And if so, yes, how fast is it growing? And this has implications for how people live, as we will see in another video. The third of the goals that an economy can choose to pursue is freedom. And, you know, freedom is a pretty basic concept, but when we talk about the economic goals, it has a particular application. So first things first, the more obvious definition of freedom here is, are you free to buy what you want to buy? You know, in other words, when you go into a store, you know, with the money that you have, are you free to get what you want? Or is somebody telling you what can or cannot be available to you? Or is somebody telling you what you can or cannot get? So one, you know, if you have money, are you free to spend that money as you wish? If so, yes, we'd say you're economically free. Of course, it's not a yes or no question, right? It's a marginal question. There are degrees of freedom. You can be a little free, you know, moderately free, you can be very free or completely free. And then on the other hand, we talk about economic freedom in can you sell, you know, what you want to? Particularly, can you sell your labor as you want to? Because remember, from the circular flow model, every household has resources, you know, land and, you know, especially labor. Can you sell your labor how you want to? Do you get to pick where you work? Do you get to pick what kind of career you want to have? Do you get to pick how much money you get for your labor or is someone telling you how much you get for your labor? So all of these things are involved in economic freedom. Can you make your money, your income as you want to? And can you spend your income as you want to? That's what economic freedom is all about. Next, there is economic security. And this one is probably the most misunderstood of these goals. Economic security doesn't necessarily refer to like your safety from attacks. You know, sometimes people think it's all about, okay, my government's protecting me uh, with a military. That means I'm economically secure. No, that's not what we're talking about with economic security. 
what we're talking about is more do you have access to the essential things you need to survive, right? Water, food, shelter. If you're economically secure, that means yes, you can get the things you need to survive, the basic necessities. If you're not economically secure, it is a struggle for you or maybe you just cannot get those things. So economic security, you have to remember, is not about like physical safety from attacks. It's about, you know, physical well-being and the bare essentials for survival. Following that, we've got equity. Now, this one also sometimes confuses students because they look at the word equity and they sometimes jump to the word equality. Now, equality can be the same as equity, but it's not necessarily the same thing as equity. A better synonym for equity would be fairness, right? If something's equitable, that means that it is fair. But the tricky thing here is fairness is a very subjective concept. What that means is everybody has a different opinion of what's fair and what's not fair. So in some cases, you know, equality might be fair if it's something like equality of opportunity, right? Uh, every player in the basketball game has the opportunity to score points. Equality of outcome might not be fair. Maybe assigning every single basketball player the same number of points wouldn't necessarily be fair if some players were better or worse or worked harder or didn't work as hard. So because everybody has a different concept of what fairness is, it can be very difficult to say definitively, you know, is something fair or not fair? You just have to remember that equity is not necessarily the same thing as equality. And finally, we have stability. So economic stability is kind of a macroeconomic concept, a big economic concept, in that it applies to an entire economy. So in terms of economic output, how much an economy produces, is it a sustainable level of economic output? Meaning, can we keep it up for a long time, right? Some economies, some governments have found ways to really ramp up economy like for a short period of time, but don't know how to keep it going for a long period of time. So sustainable output, sustainable growth is a hallmark of economic stability. Not only that, but it, would, it should be predictable. The economy and its output should be predictable, meaning you know what's gonna happen in the future. You don't want an economy that's rapidly swinging and unpredictably swinging back and forth between hard times and good times. What you want is an economy that is steady and predictable and people can know what's going to happen. And the main reason for that is when people make decisions, they factor in what they think is going to happen in the future. And so predictions of the future have real implications for what people decide today. So an economy that is stable isn't going from a time of recession where people are unemployed to a time of rapid economic expansion where maybe uh, inflation or at the very worst hyperinflation is happening as you can see here from the Zimbabwean dollar of a hundred trillion. And so economic stability is, you know, easy does it, uh, the ups aren't too up and the downs aren't too down. So if you have been paying attention, we've now covered six different economic goals. And like everything in life, the economic goals involve trade-offs because no country, no economy can fully, you know, go for all of these goals at the same time, you know, and some of them are actually opposed to each other, right? So economic freedom might conflict with economic security, for instance. So let's say the uh, government wants to provide economic security, so it taxes its citizens and uses that tax money to buy things to make sure that everybody has food. Well, the citizens who had now had to pay taxes lost some of their economic freedom, right? Or, you know, for instance, economic um, fairness might come up against economic efficiency. What's the most efficient for a company to do might not be very fair, for instance, for the people that work for that company. And so, again, governments, economies have to make trade-offs between these goals. And of course, anytime you make a trade-off, you're going to have a choice, the thing you, you know went for, and you're going to have an opportunity cost, the thing that you give up. So the choice of economic security as a goal, the opportunity cost might be a little bit of economic freedom to achieve that goal. So these are the types of things that you have to think about um, in terms of the big three economic questions that all economies have to answer and the six different goals that countries can choose to prioritize or not prioritize. It is rare for a country to say, you know, we don't care about that goal at all. But again, this is a more marginal issue. It's not about yes or no. It's how much freedom are we going to pursue? How much growth do we value? It's a balancing act. And so that's the deal with the economic goals. Thanks for watching.